Hey you guys, this is Michelle Goldstein and our next practice today in the Heart Alchemy Yoga series is a compassion practice. So compassion is the understanding and awareness of others' sufferings, including ourselves, along with, coupled with the, um, the motivation and the wanting to alleviate that suffering. And so learning to be compassionate with ourselves means that we're learning to be empathetic, and learning to be compassionate with ourselves means that we're also learning to be more compassionate with everyone and everything everywhere. So this, in regards to transforming everything in, into love, is a powerful, powerful tool. Um, let's go ahead and start out. Everybody, come to stand and separate your feet off of your mat completely. So you take kind of a wide stance, totally off the mat. Parallel your feet so that the outer edges of your feet are straight. And go ahead and on an, um, just go ahead and fold forwards actually today. Just fold forwards. And let your head drop. So begin to breathe into your body. As you let your head drop and your neck soften. Allow your breath to move deeply inside of you. And if you're finding that you're having a hard time touching the floor for any reason, you can take your hands to blocks or you can separate your feet a little bit wider if that seems like a good idea. Shift your weight just slightly forwards to the balls of your feet. And go ahead and take an inhale onto the fingertips and lengthen your heart forwards. And as you exhale, forward fold in half. Again, inhale, lengthen, come halfway up. And exhale, forward fold. One more time, inhale, lengthen out. Exhale, fold back in. Beautiful, inhale, rise up to stand. Reach the arms up on your inhale. And exhale, the palms connect in front of the heart. Close your eyes for a moment and maybe take a moment to commit yourself, at least for this next hour practice, to being more compassionate, understanding, empathetic, and gentle with yourself. Inhale, reach your arms out and up. Exhale, fold forwards. Inhale to your fingertips, lengthen your spine. Good, exhale, fold back in. Inhale, rise up to stand, reach the arms up. Good, exhale, the palms connect at the heart. One more time, inhale, the arms reach up, just getting into the flow of breath linked with movement. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, lengthen out. Exhale, fold back in. Inhale, rise up to stand. Firm the belly, press the feet down. And exhale, the palms meet at the heart. One last time, inhale, arms reach up. Exhale, bow to your legs. Inhale, elongate your spine. Exhale, step back to downward facing dog. Downward facing dog pose. And spread your fingers along the floor and work all of your fingers down. And start to even use the fingers a little bit more like, like frog fingers would look. Start to use the fingers more to assist the wrists in the work that you're doing with your hands. 
and deepest breath in and out through your nose. Shift forwards to plank position on an inhale. And as you exhale, lower yourself down to chaturanga or the floor. And flip over your toes. Inhale to cobra or upward facing dog. And exhale the hips back to downward facing dog pose. So compassion is, is a means for bringing ourselves consciously to our connection to the rest of humanity. And we're all here together anyway. All seven billion people, we're all sharing the same planet. We're all sharing the same future. So to begin to be mindful, conscious, and compassionate towards other people with the understanding that we're all fighting our own battles, we all have our own challenges. It means that we can soften a little bit more into the experience and be a little more gentle to ourselves. Step your right foot up to your hands, please. And step your left foot up to meet your right. And inhale, lengthen your spine. Good, exhale, fold forwards. And just make sure that your heels are in line with one another and your feet are either together or parallel. Mm -hmm. Inhale, come up to stand, rise up, reach up. And exhale, fold forwards, come all the way down. Inhale, lengthen, flat back. And exhale, step your left leg straight back behind you. And step back to down dog split. So you lift the right leg straight back and up on an inhale. Good. And as you exhale, hug your right knee all the way into your chest. Shift to plank position. With the right knee hugged in, round through the upper back. Beautiful. Now plank pose. Both legs straight. Exhale, lower yourself down. Chaturanga. Good. Over the toes. Inhale, up dog or cobra pose. And exhale back to downward facing dog. Deep breath. Just being really tolerant and easy on ourselves. And just watch where your mind starts to go. And when our minds create judgment or labels for things or criticisms or discriminations, just be mindful that that's just the way that the ego mind works. And it's sort of the way that we make sense of the world in some ways, but it's not ultimately the truth. So the nature of truth is love. And in yoga, especially in a practice intentionally opening and transforming everything into love, it's absolutely imperative that we dial into truth and live by it. Step your left foot up to your hands and step your right foot up to meet your left. Inhale, elongate. Exhale, bow. Inhale, rise to stand, press the feet, reach the arms up high, and exhale, fold forwards, come all the way down. Beautiful. Inhale, lengthen out. Now exhale, your right foot steps straight back behind you. You step back to downward dog. The left leg lifts up on an inhale. And as you exhale, hug your left knee into your chest. Shift forwards to plank. Good. Now plank pose. Both legs straight. Lengthen your spine. Heels press back. Exhale, lower down. Chaturanga. Beautiful. Inhale, upward facing dog. And exhale back to downward facing dog pose. So we're allowing ourselves to be human. We're allowing ourselves to make what we can call mistakes. But you can look at it as a mistake or you can look at it as a learning experience, really. So we're just allowing ourselves to be in all of our humanity and just learning. We're just learning as we go. So actually, why not make mistakes? 
because if you're learning from them, then they'll help accelerate your growth. Lift your heels up, inhale. Exhale, walk or hop your feet up to your hands. Inhale, lengthen out. Exhale, fold forwards. Inhale, rise to stand, reach the arms. And this time, exhale, the palms connect at the heart center. Good. Inhale, arms reach up. Exhale, fold in half. Inhale, lengthen out. Good. Exhale, step or jump back to Chaturanga. Inhale, upward dog. Use your belly to draw your hips back to downward facing dog pose. Lift your right leg, please, on an inhale. And as you exhale, step your right foot all the way up to your hands. Now be on your back toes on your fingertips. Make sure that you get your right knee to a, a 90 degree angle. So press your left heel back a little bit, Jessica. Good. And as you inhale, keep your right knee bent. And as you exhale, press your right leg straight. Press your right leg straight. That's it. And then with your breath, inhale, bend your right knee. And as you exhale, press the right leg straight. One more time. Inhale, bend your right knee. And exhale, the right leg straight. Good. Now bend your right knee, everybody, and come up to crescent pose. Reach the arms up. Slide your shoulders away from your ears. Lift the frontal hip points up. Yes, nice adjustments, you guys. And soften the tailbone down. And from here, bring the palms together in front of your heart. And we're going to step into standing split. So you're going to take your hands to either blocks or to the floor in front of your right foot. Step up onto your right leg, standing splits. Lift the left leg up. So it's kind of early still in the practice. In this compassion practice, uh, we're, we're mostly moving into the backs of the legs, although I always teach a back bend and a hip stretch and a lot of flow in, in pretty much all of my classes. But we're, we're focusing intentionally on the backs of the legs and opening them today. So in yoga, sometimes we call the back of the body the forgotten body. And so we're waking up a remembrance and including it in our understanding of who we are. So on an inhale, get a little length. And on an exhale, fold back in and set your left foot down next to your right at the front of your mat. Good. Inhale with a flat back. Rise up to stand. Reach the arms. Up, up. Good. And exhale, fold forwards. Come all the way down. Just working a little more cardio here. Inhale, lengthen out. I mean, it's super chill cardio. Exhale, step or jump back to chaturanga but we do get the heart moving a little bit. Inhale, upward dog. With the breath, exhale back, downward facing dog pose. Good, lift your left leg, inhale. And exhale, step your left foot all the way up to your hands. So you're in a runner's lunge position with the left knee at a 90 degree angle and the right leg straight. And you'll inhale here. And as you exhale, press your left leg as straight as you can. Press your left leg straight without forcing anything. That's it. Inhale, bend your left knee. And exhale, the left leg straight. And one more time with your breath. Inhale, you bend your left knee. Exhale, the left leg straight. Beautiful. Now bend your left knee, everybody, and come all the way up to crescent pose. Take the arms up. Find that lift of the front of the pelvis. Frontal hip points lift. You can engage the pelvic floor. Draw the navel in and up. And from the stability and the foundation of your base, grow tall. Just find where you can sit down into the pose and find where you can lift up out of the pose and practice how the two work together to bring integrity to what you're doing. Palms meet in front of your heart. 
and we're coming to standing splits. You're going to step up onto the left leg and take the hands down to the floor. You can also use blocks under the hands if that helps you. So if you cannot get your left leg straight, either come up onto your fingertips or you can take your hands to blocks. And just be exploratory as you breathe here. The goal is not to get anywhere per se. The goal is actually just to be here with what you're working with. So be here compassionately with yourself. We're all just doing the best we can. And honestly, if it stresses you out to do the best you can, whatever you think that means, then maybe you don't even do that. Just showing up on your mat is huge. It's huge. Give yourself a break. Be easy on yourself. One more breath. Lift the right leg. Then exhale the right foot down next to the left. Inhale, come up to stand with a flat back. Rise up, reach up. And exhale, this time the palms connect in front of your heart. Good. Bend your knees. Come to chair pose. Sweep the arms up. And stay here as you exhale. Lay your belly on your thighs and sweep your arms down your ribs like wings. Good. And then in a flow, inhale. Keep the knees bent. Sweep the arms up. As you exhale, lay your belly on your thighs. The arms sweep down the ribs. Good. One more time, you guys. Inhale. Arms sweep up. Exhale. The arms sweep back behind you. Good. Inhale to chair pose. Sit deeply. Take your weight to your heels. Exhale, fold forwards into the legs. Beautiful. Inhale, lengthen out. Exhale, step or jump back to chaturanga. Good. Inhale, upward facing dog. And exhale back to downward facing dog pose. Step your right foot up to your hands, please. Spin your back heel flat to the floor. Come up, warrior one. One breath. Inhale, rise up. And exhale, release the hands down to your mat. Step back to plank and lower down. Beautiful. Inhale, upward dog. Exhale back to downward dog pose. Good. Step your left foot up to your hands, please. Spin your back heel flat to the floor. Come up, warrior one pose. Biggest breath in. Good. Exhale, release the hands. Step back to plank and lower down. So we're going to move through this warrior one flow just a few more times to warm up. So you come back to down dog. Step the right foot through, back heel flat. Warrior one pose, inhale, hug the inner thighs together. Exhale, release the hands, step back, lower down. Inhale, upward dog. Exhale, back, downward facing dog. Good, left foot steps through, back heel spins flat. Come up, warrior one pose. Biggest breath in. Exhale, release the hands, step back to plank and lower down. Inhale, up dog. Good. Exhale, downward dog. Again, the right foot steps through, back heel flat. Come on up, warrior one pose. If you need to take a break, just take a break. One breath. Inhale, good. And then exhale, release the hands. Step back, plank, and lower down. Good. Inhale, upward dog. Exhale, downward dog. Step your left foot up to your hands. Spin your back heel flat. Now root the outer edge of the right foot. Come up, warrior one pose. There you go, like that. And then exhale, release the hands down. Step back to plank and lower yourself down. Good. With the breath, inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. All right, you guys, just one more time, okay? Step the right foot through. Back heel flat, warrior one pose. Inhale, come up. Good, you guys. Exhale, release. Hands down, step back, and lower. Biggest breath in. Open the heart. Exhale back to down dog. Left foot lunge. Come up. Warrior one. Inhale. Good. Exhale, release. Plank. And lower. Good. Inhale, up dog. Exhale back, downward dog. 
Nice, you guys. Take a deep breath in through your nose and out the mouth, let it go. So being able to see ourselves truly as we are with our imperfections and, you know, our, let's say our strengths and our weaknesses. As we learn to see ourselves without judgment, in fact, J. Krishnamurti said the highest form of human intelligence is to see yourself without judgment. So learning to observe who we are without judgment is allowing us to be much, much kinder and more compassionate with ourselves. Step your right foot up to your hands, please. Come up warrior one pose. Good. Open up to warrior two on your exhale. Good. So in warrior two, you want to get the right knee bent to 90 degrees. Bend your right knee, and you want to be able to get your left leg completely straight. So he spin your left heel out a little bit. Make sure your back toes turn in. Good, and the arms come out. Good. Open your right knee slightly to the right. That's it. And then hug the inner thighs in towards each other. Good. Deep breathing. So open this up just a little bit. Yep, that's it in there. Good. Now from here, come to reverse warrior. Left hand back, right arm reaches up. And press your right leg straight so you're in reverse triangle. Both legs are straight here, both legs. Good. And then lengthen, reach forwards for triangle pose. Reach through the right side ribs. Hug the right hip into center so that right sitting bone points towards the left heel. You are welcome to take your right hand to a block to get your right leg straight. Yep, like that in there. Good. Deep breathing here. Work the inner edge of the right foot down. So the big toe mound on the right foot, press that down. Good. So when we work the inner feet, especially in, well, in every pose, but definitely hamstring stretches and any standing pose. It ha helps to activate the inner leg muscles, which will help to support the opening of your lower back and your hamstrings. Also lift the kneecaps up so you flex your quadriceps, which will also assist. Beautiful. Take one more breath. And come up to warrior two pose. Bend your right knee, warrior two. And release your hands down to your mat. Step back to plank position. And go ahead and take a vinyasa, everybody. Good. Step your left foot up to your hands. Come up warrior one pose. Good. Warrior two on your exhale. Warrior two. So you want to take a long enough stance that you can get your left knee bent to a 90 degree angle and your right leg straight. Good. And then deepest breath into the pose. So I'll tell you honestly, for me, warrior two is still a challenging pose for me. It's like I don't particularly love it, let's put it this way. So I've been watching for years now my inner dialogue in this pose. And I tell myself some very funny stories, including when I'm in it and I seem to be doing well, I tell myself, you know, like, what a badass I am. Wow, Michelle, you're so strong today. <laughs> and then there are days where I'm like, wow, this is really, I'm suffering here. And then there are days that I just get out of the pose because I just can't take it. But I'll tell you what, all of those stories are just stories. So to begin to witness them and to begin to become the witness of your own life allows you to see yourself from a neutral place. And that's a powerful place to stand from. That's actually the higher mind, big mind. Take the right hand to the right leg, reverse warrior, inhale. Press your left leg straight on your exhale. Good, now inhale, lengthen, reach forwards through the left arm. Reach, reach, reach. Hug that left hip into center, other way, and then left hand down. Whoa, I hope that was okay. Big adjustment in the hips, good. And you're welcome to use a block for under the left hand. In fact, 
just to demo. Let's go ahead and do that. And if you use the block, I suggest it on the outside of the left foot. Good. Now, deep breath. See if you can shorten the right side of your torso to lengthen the right side. So contract here. Shorten this to lengthen in here. Work the foot points down. And breathe deeply. Breathe deeply. So it's good to get the alignment, I think, in, into a healthy place, but the breath work is where the yoga is actually happening. Like we're bringing the breath home to the body. There's no breath without a body to breathe into, and there's no body without breath. So our breath literally defines our life. Dead things don't breathe. Living things breathe. By attending to our breath, we are attending to our very life. Slide your shoulders away from your ears. Good. Come up to warrior two pose. Nice. Release your hands down to your mat. Step to plank and vinyasa. Up dog. Inhale. Good. Exhale back to downward facing dog. Good, another big breath in through the nose, and another big exhale out the mouth, let it go. Inhale, the heels lift, hips lift. Exhale, walk or hop your feet up to your hands. Beautiful, inhale, lengthen out. Exhale, fold in half. Good, inhale to stand, reach the arms up. Exhale, the palms connect at the heart. Go ahead and stand on your right leg and take tree pose with your left foot. Good. Deep breath, everybody. If you want to, you can take your arms up. Feel free to be expressive with your practice. So we don't practice for the sake of art. I mean, hopefully, I don't know, I practice for the sake of peace and for sanity. However, we're making art with everything we do. Art is creative expression. So your practice is, is just that. Allow yourself to express yourself authentically and beautifully. And the way you make it beautiful is by bringing your awareness to the beauty of it. Because it's, it's beautiful. Just remembering that. So we're going to transition from tree pose to Ardha Chandrasana, half moon. You're going to release the left leg, extend it straight back behind you, and take your right fingertips to the floor or a block under your right shoulder. That's it. Reach the left arm straight up to the sky. Reach the left arm up to the sky. Flex the left foot. Good. Breathe deeply. Breathe deeply. So the alignment points in half moon are the same as the alignment points in triangle, except in this pose, instead of both feet on the floor, the left leg is lifted, which means the inner right foot press and the right sitting bone points to your left heel, bringing that right leg into an external rotation. That's it. And start to spiral the heart up towards the sky. Slide your shoulders away from your ears. And just take one more breath here. Okay, step back to warrior two pose, warrior two. Great, again, reverse warrior, biggest breath in. And come to side angle pose. So come on up and press this back leg straight. Bend your front knee. Take a little bit longer step. Good. Turn your back toes in a little bit. And you can take your right hand to the inside or the outside of your right foot. You could actually probably take this a little lower. There you go. Left arm reaches over the left ear. And open the right knee to the right. Open the right knee to the right and hug that right hip in towards your left heel. Lots of cat tilt with the pelvis. And deep breath. Keep... Um, Keep the back of your neck long, so you're welcome to look up if you want to, but if you do, keep, 
Keep your chin tucked just enough that you're not collapsing back into the neck or forwards into the neck. So you want to keep a little space between the chin and the chest and a little space in the back of the neck. Nice, you guys. Come up to warrior two pose on an inhale. And we're going to exhale, release the hands down to your mat. Come up on your back toes. Okay, so we're going to step into side plank from here. Some of you, maybe if you want to, you could hook your right big toe with your two pointer fingers and come into Vashi um, with the big toe variation. Otherwise, spin to the outer left foot and reach the right arm up. So like Allie's doing, maybe you've got the big toe and this is one of my favorite hamstring stretches actually. It's a great way to stretch the backs of the legs. Lift the hips up everybody. Good, slide the shoulders away from the ears. Mula Bandha, if you lift the pelvic floor, that could help you potentially here and maybe um, engage the center as well. Not maybe, engage the core. <laughs> Definitely do that. One more breath in. And exhale, release to plank position. Shift forwards and lower down, chaturanga. Beautiful, inhale, upward dog. And exhale back to downward facing dog. <sighs> You're welcome to sigh. Yoga begins after the sigh, <laughs> begins after the letting go. Lift your right leg, please. Right leg lifts. Inhale. Exhale, send your right knee to your left elbow for a breath. Good. Inhale, lift your right leg. Exhale, right knee to the right elbow, just for a breath. Good, inhale, lift your right leg. Exhale, step your right foot all the way up to the front of your mat and step your left foot up to meet your right foot. Beautiful, you guys, inhale, lengthen out. Exhale, fold in. Inhale, rise up to stand, reach the arms. And exhale, the palms connect at the heart. Good, close your eyes for a moment and just remember your commitment to be compassionate with yourself. To really, truly see yourself without judgment, to see yourself through kind, loving, and tolerant eyes. Then open your eyes. Stand on your left leg and come to tree pose with the right foot. Whatever you like with the arms. But remember, it's beautiful. Make it beautiful. Not by forcing it to be a certain way that you think it should be, but by being responsive to how you feel in the moment and how you express yourself consciously. Slide the shoulders away from the ears and lift the kneecap on the left leg. So flex your quad. We will transition from tree pose to half moon. Extend your right leg back, left fingertips to the floor or a block under the left shoulder, right arm reaches up, flex your right foot. See if you can get your right leg to hips level. So actually open up in here, there you go and get your right toes to point straight forwards towards the wall in front of you. That's it, now work the inner left foot point down and gently draw that left hip towards the right heel. Point the left hip towards the right heel. Nice adjustments, everybody. Now from that foundation, start to spiral open in the heart and relax your face a little bit. Beautiful, step back to warrior two pose. Take a long step back, long enough you can get that right leg straight and the left knee bent. 
That's it. Turn the back toes in a little bit. Good. Reverse warrior as you inhale. Good. Open the left knee a little bit. And as you exhale, come to side angle pose. So you can take the left hand to the inside or outside of the left foot. You can take the left hand to the floor or a block. And right arm over the right ear when you're ready. So feel the tailbone lengthen down towards the right heel. And soften the lower ribs into the back ribs. This looks good. These look good. And you're breathing deeply here. And allow your body, just allow your body to receive the stretch. Allow your body to be in the pose and let the pose do the work. Remember your neck. If you ever feel like you're straining your neck in your yoga practice, just relax your neck. If, or if you're straining anything, back it off a little bit. We don't want to strain anything. Strengthening is good, but straining is counterproductive. So be, again, be honest with yourself. Be compassionate. We're just human here. Come up to warrior two pose. Inhale. Beautiful, release your hands down to your mat. Come up on your back toes. Okay, this is where we're stepping back to side plank. So if you want to try the big toe variation, you can hook that left big toe with the two pointer fingers on the left hand. Otherwise, roll to the outer right foot and reach that left arm up. Lift the pelvic floor, lift the hips. That's it, flex the feet, spread the toes. Hips up more, yes, nice. And gently release to plank and lower down, chaturanga. Up dog, inhale, beautiful. Exhale back to downward facing dog. Lift your left leg, inhale, left leg lifts up. Exhale, left knee to right elbow. Inhale, lift your left leg. Exhale, left knee to left elbow. Nice, one more time. Inhale, lift your left leg. Exhale, left knee hugs into the chest and set the left foot down at the front of your space. Step your right foot up to meet your left foot. Inhale, lengthen out. Exhale, fold forwards. Go ahead and separate your feet about as wide as your mat. Let your head drop. Maybe you interlace your fingers behind your back or hook opposite elbows, whatever you like. And if you've, whatever variation you're taking, just switch the grip. Good. Release your arms down. Heel toe your feet back together. Go ahead and step your left leg straight back behind you. Set your left knee down on your mat. And with your right hand, reach back for the left foot. That's it. Bend your left knee a lot. If you can't reach the foot with the hand, then just go ahead and lay that left leg along the floor and just be in a low lunge. But the idea is we're stretching the left quadriceps in order, we're actually going to be moving into the right hamstrings, into Hanumanasana. However, it's helpful to stretch the front of the leg, of the back leg first. So go ahead and release the left foot. Right hand to the outside of the right foot. Now press your right leg straight. Yep, back knee stays on the floor. Flex your right foot. Curl the right toes back. Some of you maybe at home, you'll want to take your hands to blocks on either side of your right leg. 
Some of you maybe want to slide the right heel forwards. And for me, personally, I like to tuck the back toes on this pose in order to ensure that I stay neutral with the back leg. If you tuck the back toes, if all five toes are tucked under, chances are you're staying in neutral. So if you start to slide the right heel forwards more, hug the inner thighs in towards each other. So moving towards Hanuman, Asana. But draw that right thigh bone back into its hip socket. Yep, you can sit on a block like Amanda's doing right here. That could be helpful, Allie. If you actually do get all the way down into Hanuman, there are lots of variations. Lately, I've been liking folding forwards, actually, in this pose. But I'll tell you that just consider this. Like, how would your highest self be in this pose? And allow your highest self to be in this pose. It's, this is a practice of releasing the ego, transcending the ego, and moving into higher mind. So it's not about how it looks. It's about the living, breathing experience within precisely what it is. Go ahead and slide yourself up. Slide that right heel back. Tuck the back toes. And press back to downward dog pose. And usually I like to bend the left knee a little bit and straighten the right leg. Or you might want to pedal out your heels, I don't know, or if you need to lift legs or whatever just to release the pose. Good. And step your left foot up to your hands. Set your right knee down, please. And with your left hand, reach back for your right foot. Deeply breathing. So gently sit the right hip forwards, if that feels good. And gently draw the right heel towards you. Again, if it feels good, if it feels like too much, then skip it. But if you have a little room to play, it might feel kind of nice. Release the right leg. Left hand to the outside of the left foot. Press the left leg straight. Flex the left foot, curl the left toes back. Hug the inner thighs together. And then maybe you start to press the left heel forwards in front of you. Maybe some of you start to move towards Hanuman. So I can tell you this, I can do the splits on my right side, but my left side, <laughs> not so much. So be responsive. They're not, it's not intended to be exactly the same. Life doesn't fit into a neat shaped box like that. So to be so compassionate with yourself. I remember one of the most powerful messages I ever got in my practice was in this pose and I was in class and I really wanted to be in full splits and my body did not permit it. And after class, I said to my teacher, you know, I'm having a really hard time keeping my ego out of my practice. And he just looked at me and smiled and said, Michelle, that is the practice. And I was like, oh yeah, right. <laughs> That's right. It has nothing to do with splits. It has nothing to do with splits. Nobody can care if you're in splits. Care deeply, immensely for your body, this home that facilitates every sunset you've ever seen, every hug you've ever given, every juicy fruit you've ever tasted. What a gift. Go ahead and slide yourself up. Tuck the back toes and press back to downward dog. Nice, you guys. And then whatever you need to release anything going on in your body, like do that totally. Vinyasa was what I was about to teach, so if that seems right or pedaling out your heels, totally do it. I get it. Good. 
And then from here, go ahead and bring your right leg through when you're ready for pigeon pose. See, you're welcome to sit on a block if that helps you. Walk yourself forwards for sure when you're ready. Walk yourself forwards and rest. If this pose is strenuous on your knees at all, then I suggest you lie on your back and take thread the eye of the needle instead. And as you breathe here, feel your heartbeat in your chest. Feel your blood move through your body. Feel your breath move through you. Right, this is how it feels to be alive. Maybe the whole point of being alive is just to live it fully, to enjoy it completely. Not in a greedy way, but rather in a way that actually is completely responsive to the whole, which means everybody everywhere, everything everywhere. It means the earth that you're sitting on right now and everything that lives upon it, including yourself. Go ahead and press yourself up. Short pigeon today. And swing your left leg around to the front of your mat and take your left foot to the outside of your right leg. Keep your right knee bent. We're setting up for Ardha Matsya and Drasana. Make sure both sitting bones are on the ground. And go ahead and reach the left arm straight up to the sky. And left arm to the floor behind you. Right arm reaches up. Right arm over the left thigh. Let's take a twist. I think this is the first twist of the whole practice today. If you can, see if you can press that left foot down, the big toe on the left foot to stabilize. And from the pelvic floor, from the low belly, up through the heart, through the crown of the head, get long and then rotate. Come back to center. Come back to center and take pigeon on the other side. Fold forwards. Stay present with your breath and stay present with your mind. One of the most powerful experiences I've had with my practice is the opportunity to restructure my inner dialogue. So just watch the things that you say to yourself. And if you say something harshly or something that's not very nice, it might be worth going back and saying it again nicely to yourself and just constantly, to constantly go back and do that. It will change your relationships. And it'll change your relationship with yourself and relationships with everybody else. Because when we see ourselves clearly, then we see that everybody's just human. And this is the heart of compassion. It's the heart of humanity. Press yourselves up, please. Swing your right leg around to the front of your space. 
Okay, right foot over the left thigh, both sitting bones press for sure, and then go ahead and reach the right arm up and back behind you. And the left arm up and over the right thigh. Sit yourself up tall and rotate. And from the root to the belly to the heart to the crown, lengthen and lift and rotate. Beautiful. Come back to center. Unravel the legs and separate your legs wide apart. Legs wide apart for Upavishta Konasana. Wide straddle forward fold. Sit yourself forwards into the fronts of the sitting bones. And if you can fold forwards, go for it. If your body does not permit that, you're welcome to sit on a block. If it helps you, flex your feet. So turn the toes up. There you go. And take some of the rounding out of your back. So if you take the arms back into the shoulders and lengthen your spine a little bit, that will just help with your posture. And we spend a lot of time, time typically rounded over computers these days, telephones, potentially steering wheels and other things. So just whenever you remember, take the shoulder heads back and get a little lift in the heart. And press yourselves up. Bring your legs together, please. And take Paschimottanasana. Reach the arms up and fold forwards. So if you can't reach your feet, which is totally natural and normal and cool, maybe you grab a strap to help you. Because in reality, you know, I actually got a text message from a friend a couple weeks ago who has been taking my class. I've known him for about probably eight or nine years. And I got a random text message that said, I just touched my toes for the first time in a standing forward bend. He was so excited. And it was. It's awesome. I know he's been practicing and working hard to do that for a long time. But it hasn't really changed the way I think about him too much. I mean, I liked him anyway. He was, you know, I've always liked him. He's a great guy. So it's you know, nobody actually cares what you can do with your body, is, the, is my point. People care about how you treat them, and how we treat others is in direct relationship with how we treat ourselves. So being compassionate with ourselves means life is just easier for everybody. Go ahead and roll yourself up. Come onto your back. Please bend your knees. So, lately I've been teaching a lot of forward bending first and finishing practices with backward bends. So that's what we're going to do again today. Go ahead and lift your hips up. Come to bridge pose. Walk your feet in. If you're feeling a little wiped and you'd rather just rest your sacrum on a block and take a more restorative back bend, that's fine. Otherwise, the shoulder blades come together. And actually, the backs of the legs engage a little bit here to help lift the hips up. And take one more breath. Okay, go ahead and release. Unroll the shoulders. Good. Okay, again, come up to bridge or wheel if you'd like a, a deeper back bend. Urdhva Dhanurasana. Work the inner feet down, parallel your feet, so the heels turn out just slightly. Separate your feet a little bit wider. Other way. There you go. That's it. Press down through the palms to lift the heart. Inhale. Good. Go ahead and release and come on down. 
bring your knees into your chest. If you're at home, you want to do a few more back bends. That's understandable. Hug your knees into your chest. Take your arms out to your side like cactus arms. Go ahead and drop your knees to the right. Maybe you slide your hips to the left a little bit. That works for you. Come back to center. Switch sides. Come back to center. Hug your knees into your chest one more time. Release your arms and your legs to the floor. So we're setting up for Shavasana. Close your eyes. At home, please rest for as long as you like. May we be at peace. May our hearts remain open. May we know the beauty of our own true nature. May we be healed. May we be a source of healing in the world. Namaste.